Hola, everybody. Just here in this co-working space, enjoying some aircon. Tomorrow I have an ayahuasca ceremony, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm not going to be recording this one because it's going to be a group ceremony. I'm going to take my notepad and I'm going to really set an intention. Uh, my main intention for it is just going deep, getting some clarity and bringing up any kind of emotions that want to come up, anything that needs to be felt, anything that needs to be purged. I'm hoping as well to come with that some clarity as well. So it's going to be a two day ayahuasca ceremony, back to back, where I'm going to do the first one where we start at like 8pm tomorrow evening, which is quite late. And then it continues until sunrise, which will be about 4 or 5am or so. So all the way through the night. I don't know why it's done through the night, I guess, because it's quieter, uh, more relaxed. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. And then again on Saturday night as well. So this is the first time I will have ever done it. Ayahuasca itself, like properly under ceremony, properly brewed, um, drinking the tea. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. After doing those mushrooms, those uh, Enigma dried powdered magic mushrooms about a month ago now, that was quite an experience, but it wasn't, it was too much. It was just too much. Um, I didn't really experience, it was a very deep experience, but it was just overwhelming almost. So with this one, I'm just looking forward, going into it with an open mind, an open heart and just seeing what comes up and just noting down whatever I can basically. So I'm looking forward to it. And here we go. Right now, just making the most of this space. It's quite noisy at the moment, but just up here, got, it's called the good space. So I've got four more days left in my current hotel. I'm not entirely sure where, where I'm going to be going next, but we shall see. All will become clear soon. I wanted to mention as well, <clears throat> of course, today is the, it's the 24th of June and three days ago was the solstice. And yeah, I know that myself and just so many other people that I've been that I have been talking to have been going through quite a lot in terms of like feelings coming up for them, emotions coming up to be felt, feeling a lot of heaviness and processing it on the lead up to the solstice and followed then into the actual day itself. And I realized in myself as well, it was the day after the solstice, so two days ago I a lightness came about and really yesterday shall I say the 23rd like a couple of days after the solstice that I actually started to feel much better so yeah um, if you've had a tough one if you've really been through it I would just say keep keep allowing yourself that time give your, give yourself time to relax and just go into solitude go in and really focus on your inner world Give yourself, your, give yourself that space that you need. It's so easy to get caught up in our work and other priorities, but sometimes, especially at a gateway point, such as a solstice, a combination point, it's really ideal for us to be able to take that extra little bit of time for ourselves, just to go within and get clear on where we are and what we want to create. So I know for myself, I've had a lot of blessings come into my life in the past few days around this solstice point. And it's a sign of what's to come. And I can see the opportunities that have presented themselves have opened me up to greater amounts of um, security in terms of like financial security, which has enabled me to start thinking 
bigger than I was before. I'm able to look at different ways of living life now that I didn't before. Not, not a huge difference, but enough for me to be able to start seeing things differently and also what I'm contributing, contributing to the world as well. The kind of work I'm doing, and I've actually been working on some, some video introductions for Be The Change Collective. <laughs> so this is all a project under development. <laughs> And yeah, just a really good time right now for us to be able to reestablish, uh, realign ourselves into what we really want to be doing. If we haven't felt like we've been doing exactly what we want to be doing, if we're going to that job that hasn't felt right for us for some time, and now it's just a really good time still. We're in this very ripe energetic right now where it's a great time to be getting clear on the steps, the practical steps that we can put in place for ourselves to move into new ways of life, ways of working, ways of being, ways of relating. I wish you the very best of solstice gateways and I look forward to speaking with you once again. Much love to you all. This is Zach. I'm about to go through another ego death tomorrow at this ayahuasca ceremony, and I'm looking forward to it. Much love. Bye for now. Thank you. Tchau, 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 tchau. Estamos aqui junto com meus irmãos aqui também, grande mesmo. Alegria, paz, felicidade, muito bom mesmo. Gratidão, meus irmãos. Fico feliz para você. Tchau, tchau. Tchau, tchau. Tchau, tchau. What a ride. Now for 
shower, food, sleep, then do it all over again. Hey, so I made it home around about 10 a.m. Ordered loads of vegan food, ate it eventually. Then I've slept for about six hours, which feels like just enough. And now I'm ready for round two. I actually feel ready. <laughs> so let's go. Hola amigos, I'm just in my hotel room, I'm about to go catch the bus back to Casa Amazonia for the second evening and I just wanted to share while I'm in this moment now some reflections of what I experienced last night. It was very different to magic mushrooms. Those mushrooms that I did on the 5th of June. Today is the 26th of June. Radically different. A whole new level of depth. I came to realize that I was on a really good path for myself and that I just need to surrender. Surrender to allow God within to flow through me. There was a lot of lineage. Lineage was a key word. Going back and being able to look at my relationship with my father in particular and his father. And how this is all just coordinated together so beautifully as it does. It's a cosmic design. Another thing that came up for me was the idea of intergalactic healing of different civilizations across the galaxy. It was a real honor to be sharing space with a He wasn't, he's not Aztec, he's not Mayan, he's not Peruvian, he's just he's an Amazonian tribesman, this, this shaman that I had the privilege of being able to sit with in ceremony. And not only that, <clears throat> there were people from all around the world there. We had Oriental, we had Caucasian, we had Latina, we had Saudi Arabian. Yeah, we had people from all around the world there, or I mean, different ethnicities of human. And I know that that represents the fact that Earth is a melting pot. Humanity here on this planet, we've been placed here to create a, a sort of symmetry, a balance, a balancing of peace among this galaxy, where there have been wars for eons. The Earth experiment, a large part of it, has been about 
bringing all the different energies across the galaxy together and putting them into a big soup pot called Earth. And so I could feel and I created the feeling of healing galactic wounds and intergalactic as well. Ones where we were able to all come together and just be here as one people. Of course, that was another theme as well. We are one. We are one. I also felt my Kundalini come online briefly at some point. I had, I know I've done a lot of work on my heart and solar plexus chakras in the past three to four years, but I haven't done that much on my sacral or my root. And those two came up for me last night. And so I was able to kind of just, you know, do my own kind of Reiki energy healing work as there was things, emotions coming up in the sacral and they actually moved down into the root. And a part of that as well was because I needed a wee, <laughs> but those emotions were there. And that was great to be able to move it. But yeah, I felt what could have been a kundalini, my kundalini coming on. I remember laying at one point and just kind of like stretching out um, my entire body kind of like, like, like a point, like a big line. And my spine just whoosh, straight, lying down amongst all of the mumbling <laughs> I was doing. Because this was my first time. The dosage, I started off and I was given about a half a cup, a tiny little shot glass, um, probably about 60, 60 milliliters or something like that, shot glass. I had about half a one. That was the first round. I didn't feel much. I felt a little bit and I saw some, the candles when I closed my eyes after looking at candles, the, the residual kind of imprint of the candles flame was kind of looked like a star, like a Da Vinci painting of a star. That was beautiful. And then the second dose came and the second dose, I asked for grande, so big. And I asked him to fill it up to the top, but he filled up about three quarters. That was a uh, full send. <laughs> that word. That word's in our collective consciousness at the moment. That key word, full send. Send it. <laughs> oh, I sent it. For the first time. I'm so glad I did. I didn't need the third round at the end of the evening. That second was enough. Because I can be quite sensitive to substances in general. It was amazing. It was amazing. And of course I went into it with this intention of not really a great expectation. I just wanted to experience whatever the mother wanted to show me. And she showed me various things. So much appreciation, so much apology, so much appreciation for the people in my life, for my mentors, for my colleagues, for my friends, for my family, 
for all of my loved ones, for all those I'm not even connected with consciously. So much love. And I chose to feel how I wanted to feel and some emotion did come up. And in a way, I wish I had, or I wish I could have experienced more of a private ceremony, just to allow myself to really go there with my emotion and just splurge it out a bit more. Because when I was in the depths after having the second shot, when I was in the depths of the experience, um, I was too tired, too nauseous, too disoriented to be able to stand up and walk properly without probably hurting myself or falling over. And the door was open and I could have gone outside to be able to, to make a racket, but I just didn't. So I just laid there and mumbled a lot, <laughs> which was cute. It was really, really special. Let's see what notes that I wrote down. Ooh. So, intergalactic healing. I already mentioned that about just being in this space with all of us there from the embodying the energies of the entire galaxy all in one spot and creating that healing there in that way that was that was strong magic magic I love that word What have you taken from this land? And as I sat there with my fancy pen and this GoPro and all of these fancy things that I had, that I have, like all these really cool things that I've been able to manifest, like a decent bag, a really cool yoga mat that I love, and it's, and you compare that to those tribes who live in the Amazon rainforests and how they're so deeply connected to their land and they take what they need and then they give some back. Whereas I know in my own lineage, being from England, being from the UK, and knowing what my country and my ancestors historically have done to lands such as the Americas, India, so many other countries as well, pillaging, raping, abusing. And of course, this is all by design, this is all God's plan, but it was humbling for me to be sat there on my yoga mat with a roll of toilet paper as I sat there with this Amazonian tribesman and his daughter and everyone else there of course as well and this toilet paper considering all those trees that have been chopped down I'm considerate as it is, I, I have been, always, I always have been, well, for the most part, very considerate of my environment, the earth, recycling, being mindful of how many resources I'm using from our mother, earth. But that was another level for me, being able to 
witness that in myself, that kind of humbling feeling of take what you need and give the rest back. But also, yeah, take what you need and leave no trace, leave nothing but footprints. We are the stewards of this planet after all. We just haven't all fully learned that yet. And even those who have learned, such as myself, I'm still adjusting at the rate to which I comfortably can along with the collective turtle or tortoise that is the rest of humanity in terms of how we care for this planet and the lengths that we go to in order to take care of her and ultimately ourselves. House, house, H-A-O-X. That was the saying, that was a chanting. House, house, house. That's what the shaman would say. House. It almost sounded at times like hush, 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 to be like hush, quiet. But it wasn't, it's just a, a saying of like acknowledgement. House, house, house. House. It's wonderful. What is ego? Question mark. When embodying God within, does it even become a case of having an ego anymore? Does it even matter? As long as you're still caring of yourself and those around you and your environment. So long as you're not harming others or other things, generally you're okay. <laughs> when is it okay to take? Because I, going back to the toilet roll in the Amazon rainforest, I had smashed my shot glass, my ayahuasca shot glass somehow during my trip while I was frolicking around on my yoga mat and I just smashed it a piece of the glass and there was glass on the floor and I woke up eventually you know cognizant and and it was daylight as well so I could actually see and I saw that there was glass there and so I started I, I realized I needed to rip off some toilet paper because I wanted to take responsibility for my own actions and clean up clean up that glass those glass shards and I started by I didn't want to hurt my hand so I took like six or seven sheets of this toilet paper to like wrap around my hand to be able to to move the glass around on the floor And then I felt my own thoughts, my own alignment kick in and say, actually, you don't need that, mo that many sheets for that. And so I reduced it down to two sheets. And then I just carefully scooped up the glass. When is it okay to take and when is it not okay to take? That's a thing, that's a theme for myself. Because generally I'm okay with letting possessions go that I own. Or ideas or any kind of intellectual property. I'm okay with letting things go and I'm also okay with receiving things, usually. It's just the manner in which we receive them there's some things that I've done in the past that I've taken from others that it was not the right thing to do. And of course the same has happened to me in like kind, but 
Yeah, that's something I just need to integrate. When is it okay to take and when is it not? And I... How to stop Aya purging or Aya puking. So, of course, when we take ayahuasca, many people experience the vomiting that comes and the body's trying to reject the, um, the liquid, the brew. And this rejection. Um, I didn't actually have any vomiting. And I feel like I want to do a video where I explain my experience and why I didn't vomit. And I feel like so much of that was because I had prepared myself. I hadn't eaten meat for a long time and I've been eating a lot of vegan food, raw vegan food. And I've really, I got rid of a lot of film inside my digestive tract in preparation for this. It was very clean inside my stomach, I felt. And also in terms of being able to make peace with the ayahuasca brew as you, as you drink it, and swelling the mouth, clearing it out of the mouth so the taste is gone. It was delicious, by the way. It tasted almost like licorice. Um, yeah, it's really quite nice, actually. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's quite strong at the same time. And just being able to, yeah, swell out the mouth and take that down. And then if there's any discomfort or nausea in the stomach, just sending love and peaceful energy and intention towards the stomach will then allow the body to, instead of rejecting the substance, just allow the ayahuasca to kind of meld and melt into your being um, peacefully and lovingly. And that worked a treat. I did not urge at all, I don't think at all. I had some tummy moments where it felt a bit funky, but I think that was residual digestion from the food I had ate earlier that day. What else did I write? And the sacred feminine and of course the sacred masculine as well and how the feminine and the masculine interact and that's just been a f something that I've wanted to dive deeper into because I see polarity, consciousness, polarity consciousness relationship coaches and I do see the merit in what they're teaching I do see that but I just want to learn more about it and at one point I noticed there was this kind of sexual energy this fire that I was brewing in my sacral and in my root during that almost kundalini um, period in my experience yesterday where I felt this kind of like this sexual fire come out of me um, which was really awesome because it was like I've been wearing a bit of a chastity belt for for a long time for different reasons <laughs> another another word I wrote down ancient stress if you look at like, these grey hairs, I'm 29 years old. I've got a lot of grey hairs. And that's from both stress and wisdom. And I've, we've all collectively been through so much stress on this planet. Over the years, thousands of years, hundreds. It's so nice to be able to just frolic and just relax in a space like that. And just completely let it all out and open up yourself. In that moment, that was absolutely beautiful. And just being able to do that with safety. Whereas before in the old energy, the old earth, the old energy, just that wouldn't have happened that way. And I receive. You receive. I am a receiver. We are antennas. We receive. We receive. <laughs> we are children. We are children. It was beautiful. Every single one of those people there, I saw the child in them. There was a fellow of mine, a, a friend there. She was, it was the first time doing um, ayahuasca as well as me. And there was another person there. It was the first time as well. And it was just like to see them dancing in that way, like completely in their child 
in their inner child and owning it it was amazing and not just them everybody really you could just, I could just see it we're all kids just there having fun it was just so magic so healing so grateful so appreciative so honoring so respectful so sorry so thank you that's all I have to share for now never forget that was another thing as well no one ever forgets the universe never forgets be mindful of what you do forgive yourself and never forget I love you goodbye just so beautiful <laughs> just so beautiful <laughs> just the sun coming out <sighs> going away <laughs> that was a re that was a really beautiful experience I will never forget. <laughs> it's so nice because I'm just pouring out of emotion, deep gratitude, deep gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the space with me. Thank you everybody who was there last night and the night before for making my first experience with that. My first unraveling. So wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Grandma Ayahuasca showed me herself and in that process she showed me myself. <laughs>